In the world of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, coding is now an integral part of just about any educational program and career. Any coding experience that your students can gain is worthwhile and will help set them up for success. My name is Brian, and I'm a physics professor at Jacksonville University. I have a PhD in computational condensed matter physics, and I teach coding as part of my undergraduate physics courses. In this series, I'm going to provide you and your students with videos and activities that can help them learn coding in a physics context. Each of the videos in this series will be approximately five minutes long and feature one physics code written in Python. First, I begin with a brief review of the physics concepts that the code implements. Then I transition to an overview of the code, demonstrating a few sample uses that instruct students about how to edit the code. Time permitting, I spend a little time at the end of each video giving an overview of how the code functions behind the scenes. Each of these codes is available at a link in the description, along with a series of follow-up activities that I encourage the students to try out. The codes are hosted on a website called Trinket, where students can edit and run code with no software installation required. By creating a free account on Trinket, your students can save their edited codes and submit them to you for grading. Activities are organized into simple problems, extended explorations, and project ideas. The simple problems should take students a few minutes to complete and are ideal for at-home assignments. The extended explorations should take students one to two hours with some guidance and are designed to be completed during class time like a lab activity. The project ideas are broader problems that could take students days or even weeks to complete and are intended to be used as inspiration for term papers or class presentations. These videos are highly modularized. Most of them don't require students to view the previous videos beforehand, and any prerequisite videos will be listed in the video description. So they can be incorporated into your class any way you like. I recommend four possible implementations. First, if you have students who are interested in coding, but you don't have time or experience to incorporate any coding into your class, you can send the student a link to this video series to work through at home. Second, if you want to try out a coding activity in class, you can select a video to show in class and have students complete the simple problems or extended explorations. Third, if there's a topic you'd like your students to explore in depth using coding, you could take a set of related videos, for example the videos about vectors, and use those as the basis for your discussion of that topic. Finally, if you want to implement videos regularly, you can assign students to watch the videos in your class or at home. With 52 videos planned in this series, you could conceivably incorporate as many as two videos per week in a typical school year. You can assign the simple problems as homework to prepare students for extended explorations in class and assign one project idea to each student across the quarter, the semester, or the school year. Again, how you incorporate these videos is up to you. If you have questions or feedback, you're welcome to reach out to me via email in the comments below or on Twitter. I hope you find these resources helpful. 